So together, this is the psalm appointed for today. And uh, this, we're going to read this in unison. And the first verse, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. That is the basis for my sermon this morning. But together in unison, let's read Psalm 139, verses 1 to 12. Together, O Lord... It is high, go back Josh, it is high, I cannot attain to it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Gracious Father, we are reminded by this word from the psalmist that you are the only one who searches. You are the only one who truly knows who each of us are. That wherever I may go in life, whether it be as lowest place in this earth or up to the highest heaven, the psalmist reminds us that you are with me. And the wonderful phrase, it says that your hand is upon me. Help us here, gracious Father, for Jesus' sake, to be confident in your presence with us. So that instead of fear, or instead of guilt, or instead of uh, uncertainty, O Holy Spirit, you will bring us to Jesus who makes us uh, not afraid, who makes us confident, and who provides clarity as to the direction in our life both as a person and then as a congregation. For I do ask this in his name. Amen. As I begin, I want to take opportunity right off the bat to say thank you to you. You have allowed me the opportunity and the privilege to attend the uh, district convention. It was the 50th district convention of the Alberta British Columbia district of our denomination called Lutheran Church Canada. It was held at the Prince of Peace uh, building site, the, you know, the building and the area, the property that is under uh, major review and has caused great wound in the lives of our district and in the lives of many investors. Um, thank you, you know, and prayers such as, you know, safety as I've traveled. You know, it's unbelievable how Calgary, uh, I don't know if you've been there, but Calgary is a big, I mean, it is a big city now. And traffic is, to say that it is busy would be an understatement. Or maybe I'm at that place where it's old enough where I think anything going faster is like, wow, it's super fast, you know. But the, the people uh, are noted. Um, and I probably got a speeding ticket because I joined them. <laughs> oh my goodness, you know. Uh, thank you also for Veronica. She was just sitting right in front of me as our voting delegate. And, you know, for her participation, she still is there. The convention is still going. And on this day, you know, the, uh, the convention assumes that I'm going to read a prepared sermon by President Jim Gimble from the seminary. But I'm going to disappoint you. Uh, I'm not going to read that. I'm preaching that text which speaks to our life and our heart here. The theme for the convention was called Pray to the Lord of the Harvest, where Jesus says, you know, ask the Lord of the a harvest to send out workers into his field. 
And there was a renewed emphasis on the willingness to get gifted and called people to join together in joining Jesus in his work. But a sub-theme, a strong current beneath this was the theme of repentance, of sorrow. Um, when President Don gave his report, it was the first time since uh, the event happened that he publicly said he was sorry. And when he said he was sorry, uh, he broke down and wept. And the assembly was quiet. The assembly was open. It was the first time that any administrator had the courage to even utter such words as I'm sorry. There, is, there was a, a mood of acceptance, a mood of a willingness to to allow themselves, to allow our district to be changed. But please note, it is a split, a clear split in our district as to what this change may mean. Case in point, the district elect president, the Reverend Dr. Glenn Schaefer, was elected and called with 75 votes. He needed 74 to win. Uh, the next candidate had 71 votes. We in the district are split. We want change, Lord, no doubt about it. We want to move from where we were because we know that the system that was in front of us and with us hurt people. It isn't getting the job done. There is a public acknowledgement of that. But at the same time, Lord, we don't want to change too fast. We don't want to change like this, you know? And so 50% of the voting assembly voted for someone we hope will change, but goes back to the way things were done. And the district is split. Personally, I do not like seeing that and I, did, I would not have voted for the incoming president-elect. I have told him that face to face. I've told this to our national leader. I've told this to our outgoing president, Don Scheman. And uh, you know, it's a, it's, an, it's a wound and a bridge that he will have to build at least with me, pastorally and as an investor. And each of you have to make your own decision. But it is this area of change, making the transition here. It's this area of us crying out on a day like this, on Pentecost, Lord, you promised to send the Holy Spirit upon your followers so that the Holy Spirit will lead us in following you. And that means that a change in our lives are going to take place. But what kind of change? What's the rate of this change? And is it really going to sit well with us here at Grace? Well, next Sunday, we get to have our annual meeting, our mini convention. Immediately following the service, you will gather, you will gather in prayerful deliberation about, you know, the days ahead, the months ahead here, at Grace Lutheran Church. I will not be here next Sunday. I am committed to a professional development day with Ken and Leanne. We're going to a teaching workshop dealing in the area of healing ministry. So it's an opportunity. I believe it's a, a God-given opportunity for us together without me present to speak. What is, what is the Lord leading in our heart? And I hope and pray that there is such honesty or will be authentic honesty or transparent honesty that you will in one heart and one voice say that what we've been experiencing, what we have been seeing, the kind of direction that we are being led you know, by the Spirit, we will affirm or at least we will have the decency no we are not going down that road. And the time for us to 
you know, put to rest this direction is now at hand. This is the meeting, brothers and sisters, that will, that will, is before us. That's crucial in our life together, and I guess for me. So with that in mind, I would just like to remind us that the change that we are being led to embrace, the direction that our shepherd is leading us to, toward, the kind of community that the Spirit is evolving here at Grace Lutheran is this. We are a, bro a group of brothers and sisters, a community, a family of brothers and sisters who want to live our life following Jesus in His ministry of preaching and of teaching and of healing. Got that? Is that clear? I, I hope that's clear for all of us. We want to be here in Camrose located at this wonderful corner that's visible for so many people. A community that is willing to let our lives be shaped by our true pastor. His name is Jesus. He is the one shepherd of the one flock and he's willing to gather unto himself young and old, healthy and not healthy, people of every age, race and color to come and to follow him and to let his work his ministry, as we call it, one of preaching and teaching and healing be central here in this church community. Oh, how we are in love with Jesus because He loves me. Instead of, hi, welcome to Grace Lutheran and what it means to be a Lutheran. There's a big difference. We are a Christian community whose heritage is Lutheran and whose love because of that heritage does affirm Jesus as the Lord and Savior of our life together. So what does it mean by preaching and teaching and healing? I just have a few minutes more and then I'll come to a close. Just in the area of preaching, it's not just here in the pulpit, you know, but I will say to myself, to you, that when I do stand here or when the person who's called stands here, that message Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, it's almost like a broken record, you know, it is a broken record, will draw our attention, will captivate our mind and our heart on Jesus who calls you to be his follower. Here in preaching ministry, through word and sacrament, through our worship celebrations, some very traditional and informal, some like today and some in contemporary, all our worship celebrations will be centered around Jesus who speaks to us from God's word and who comes to us in such events like the sacrament of Holy Communion today or in a couple weeks, the sacrament of Holy Baptism as it was done last week to Sarah and Owen. But preaching also means having the willingness to talk to one another about Jesus. Simply doing this, looking at each other, if you just sort of do that right now, you know, just sort of look at the person next to you, Will you do, take opportunity to do that? And, and like Chris, you're by yourself, so you can look at Ken and Leanne. <laughs> Gerald, you can look over John there. You just turn your head and look. But look at them and just simply say, Jesus loves you. Just try that, okay? Jesus loves you. Was that difficult? Was it difficult? Let's try it one more time. Jesus loves you. That's what it means to preach the gospel. It just simply means to hold a natural, normal, common day conversation without raising your voice, without doing, just simply saying when the opportunity allows itself. Remember, Albert, Jesus loves you. You know, that's all it is. 
nothing hard, so that when guests and visitors come, or when they're coming here, they're drawn here, that when they leave, it, they will remember one thing about Grace Lutheran Church, that Jesus loves you, now and forever. And that's the most important reality in your life. It's not how old you are, how healthy you are, how sick or, or unhealthy you are, how rich you are. What really matters in life is that you know the Son. And that through the Son, you know the Father's love for you. And that's why we exist. And so preaching ministry will become paramount, important, renewed here at Grace. Second, a teaching ministry. As preaching speaks to the heart, teaching speaks to our mind. Teaching is allowing the Word of God to renew attitudes or to actually change attitudes. You know? And please, uh, it takes a whole lot of time to get stubborn Germans to change their mind. And sometimes, just sometimes, the good Lord needs a two by four to hit us over the head. And it isn't just one time. You might need a couple times. You know? They don't call us stubborn krauts for nothing. And for those of you who are not German, well, I could say stubborn Norwegians because I'm half Norwegian. But stubbornness, blindness, hardness of mind is a symptom of humanity. And we need the Word of God to come and to change how we think. So that when we relate to people, we don't close our mind. We don't shut our ears. But the Word of God is renewing our mind. So that we are able to be changed and look at new direction. Oh... Oh, Lord, you know, that means one of the basic, simple things that we're going to do here at Grace over the course of at least the next year is to encourage one another to do what? To read, to mark, to learn, to inwardly digest thy word, O Lord. Thy word was found and it became a delight unto my soul. To take time to, you know, find ways to get the Bible, you know, into your lives. Maybe home devotions or small group fellowships to begin with. You know, we have to, we want to. If you are my disciples, you will keep my word and my word will abide in you, Jesus has said. That's the ministry that Jesus is doing in teaching renewing the mind so that we can entertain open possibilities. St. Peter, he had to oh, have his mind open. He really didn't like Gentiles. But it was only when he had a vision, only when God opened his mind to see that all things are clean, that he dared have the courage to go to a non-Jewish person and to tell that person Cornelius about who John? Jesus. And what happened because of that? Cornelius and all his family, all his household came to faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior. And finally, whereas preaching speaks to the heart, teaching speaks to the mind, we will allow ourselves to be shaped by Jesus' ministry of healing. That literally speaks to our bodies. You know, when I was younger, I didn't suffer from ailments. I was a thinner, healthier person. I seldom went to a doctor. I never had a broken bone. I never had a surgery. I literally thought I was invincible. I could jump over a wall and if I couldn't jump over it because of my, you know, stockiness, I would go right through the wall. And if that wall was thick, because I'm also part stubborn German, guess what I would do? If I got stopped once, I would come back and I'd go at it again. <laughs> and if I got stopped, I'd go at it again, you know believing 
that my body was able to do anything. It's funny how age shows how, you know, invincible you aren't. So that today, you know, there are certain ailments that, every, that I suffer from that every day I have to take medication for. One of them being, uh, you may or may not know this, is that I do have a congenital heart ailment. And I have to keep my blood thinned, else the biggest thing that I will struggle with is a stroke. And if not a stroke, it can be a, a, a heart-related disease. Okay? I thought, oh, never such a thing. You know, I ran, I played ice hockey, but my body needs a healing grace as I get older. The second thing I have, you know, you may not know this, but in certain parts of my joints I have arthritis. So like today, I cannot, um, how do I want to put it? My thumb here, I have a hard time. Lucy, I'm just gonna to come to your chair. I have a hard time grabbing that because the pain is very real in my finger. And, you know, my wife will see me driving and I'm rubbing my hand. You know, it can be really hot out and you'll see me like wear a Michael Jackson glove, a white glove. Because the ache is, you know, I don't know if people with arthritis have the same, but it's so, you know, I have to keep my hand warm. You know, it hurts. And I take almost, not every day, but a, a painkiller, an anti-inflammatory. What I'm getting at is, what I want us to, get, to see is, instead of just going to a doctor, and they're absolutely needed, I've also learned at the passing of time, there's nothing wrong with coming to Jesus. Lord, heal me of my body sickness. Heal me of those ailments which are hurting me, both of body or heart or mind, so that my body physically can be at rest. You know, there are times when working with people creates great stress in my life. I, I don't know other than, Lord, I have to turn to you to give peace. You know, to learn to not lash out. Lord, I need you. And uh, I just want to encourage you, you know, uh, and invite you to come to Jesus always, every day, and ask him for your, his healing grace in your life. I don't know where you're at. But what I do know is I know him who's here in this community and is willing to share the healing grace. And at Grace, we're going to start something new. Not new, but we're reclaiming a ministry that was part and parcel of the church ever since its beginning. We are developing a healing ministry here at Grace. You know, and more will be coming. But I just want to highlight this that there are individuals whom the Lord is calling, gifted individuals in this ministry. And there are more than just these few. You know, there's a lot more out, out among us here that the Lord is calling to, to join in this healing ministry. This is the ministry of Jesus here at Grace. A community that's willing to let itself be lived in the presence of and under the Lordship of Jesus, our pastor, who loves us and gave his life for us, so that we will let him do his ministry of preaching, of teaching, and healing. And I hope that on Sunday, next Sunday, that as a congregation, that you will affirm this direction, or at least be transparent and honest in the Lord's leading with you to say, thank you, Pastor Greg, but that's really not what we sense where we're going. And that then declare where you are going for the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.